And we are back with the crew. I am Mackenzie Fagan, host of 112BK, and I am joined today by... Uh, I'm Mira. I am the editor for the show. And I'm Shireen Barry, and I'm one of the producers of the show. We have a special Slim Down the Crew today, you guys. We're going to be talking about Kyle Kashev. This is the uh, Parkland High student who's offered a Harvard was just rescinded because he said some very racist shit. Right, I heard about that. Um, so apparently he got accepted into Harvard, and we should note that he's like a conservative student, right? So post-shootings, he was still pro-gun rights, and he was like, the shootings could have been prevented if the teachers were armed. So he's sort of this like conservative poster boy, got into Harvard, and then a former friend of his surfaced some racist comments, I guess, that he made in like a shared Google mm. Doc study sheet. Um, he used the N-word a bunch of times. He said, kill all the fucking Jews. Mm. And his response Jeez. is, I bore no racial animus. The context was a group of adolescents trying to use the worst words and say the most insane things imaginable. Harvard didn't buy it and they rescinded his offer. Um, what do you guys think about this? He was 16 when he wrote these things. We all do stupid shit when we're 16. What do you think about um, a 16-year-old being held responsible for using racial slurs? You know, is it fair to say that? I, I feel like I do buy his excuse because I feel like we all were in high school and 16 at one point, and especially if you went to a co-ed high school, like, you know, 16-year-old boys are the fucking worst. They are. That is They correct. just say the most inflammatory shit for the sake of saying inflammatory shit. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I remember, like, boys in my class, like, using the N-word, white people using the N-word, like, very um, recklessly. And it's not, like, I'm not excusing them. I'm just saying it's, like, it, 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 it. we should, like, take a look at the larger issue at hand here. It's not just that these things are being regurgitated, but why, why are 16-year-old boys like this yeah I think place. that's like a valid point is that yeah. like point one is no one is surprised 100% I remember my friends when they were 16 saying things for shock value mm. that maybe they didn't believe I don't know if Kyle Kashev believes that all of the fucking Jews should die, but he said it. He's Jewish. Does that complicate things for you a little bit? I mean, I mean, again, I don't know. He says that he bore no racial animus. I am inclined to believe that you can say something racist without right. bearing racial animus. True. But the point that we want to talk about is, does Harvard then um, accept that explanation and still accept him? What do you think, Shereen? I think like well a lot well when he publicized this whole thing he also pointed to Harvard's own very racist past and there's there are many students of color who can attest to this who can who can talk about their experiences um, with racism so that brings up the you know the question that how come Harvard like at what point what do you have to do to redeem yourself you know um, Harvard everyone seemed to like forgive and still it's like this elite institution that everyone's dying to get into and yet like here's a guy who you know who says that he went he 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 experienced something really traumatizing and he says that he's a changed person and he apologized profusely for what he said so i just want to and then harvard's uh, response was like was like it doesn't seem like you've redeemed yourself so i'm like yes being 16 isn't like isn't that young to be saying like um stuff like kill all the jews or like the n-word but at the same time, I'm just like wondering what, like, who gave, like, what kind of moral authority does Harvard have to basically determine whether a person has redeemed themselves or not? I mean, it may not, not, but do you think that it's a false equivalency to compare an institution with a human being? I mean, I guess that's like saying that Germany shouldn't sit on human rights councils because of World War II and the Nazis. But like, mm. saying that institutions can't evolve, or I don't know, having but, that equivalency of humans and like a, a non sentient organization. Yeah. But humans seems... make up that non sentient organization no. well I mean I guess I guess one other thing that I'll say about this is that it this bears echoes of the whole affirmative action mm. debate right yeah. where it's like people are like well I'm specifically thinking about the lawsuit that the Chinese American students um, took against Harvard saying that they should have been allowed in because they had high test scores and like did everything right basically mm. and it's like uh, how are you under the illusion that college admissions is some like objective set of criteria it's always been unfair it mm. always will be unfair mm. if you're a legacy student you're going to get in you know mm. it, it it favors it favors certain people and there is some formula some unfair formula that is applied by admissions people mm. and so you attend Harvard at their discretion yeah. you serve yeah. at their pleasure right so I guess the idea that anyone deserves to go to Harvard, 
uh, or like that it's unfair is like, no shit, it's unfair. My concern is... You're going to call this person out. You're going to call Kyle out and he's going to grow up and he's going to come to, he's going to become a bitter exactly. man, a bitter yeah. white Republican, probably more than like extremely conservative man. And th- like, do we need an- you're just going to alienate him and you're just going to make him mad. And I'm not saying you have to like appease him and just let him in, but he's going to get called out anyways once he gets to college. But is there a chance like, that this is a moment of transformation for him? I don't know. Maybe this is extreme. No, absolutely not. This is going to be the, the only way that he learns his lesson. Sin? He's going to he's going to feel vindicated. He's going to feel vindicated. He's going to feel even more like, angry. Well, what's yeah. the alternative? You tell a 16-year-old kid it's fine to say the M-word, to call your peer in high school the N-word, and you can still get into Harvard. No, then house. what message is Harvard sending to all of the other admitted students of color? Saying, you know, what Harvard basically said was, you know, we're not going to comment on this case, but we do rescind in cases where the moral character mm. and judgment of students is called into question. And I guess what message does it send if you are a black student who got into to Harvard and Harvard like I don't know Harvard bought it Harvard said it's okay we're gonna excuse your behavior when you were 16 I'm not without empathy for him because like yeah. I was a stupid 16 year old who did stupid yeah. things right I was just fortunate enough to live in a pre-digital era where I didn't ruin the rest of my life I Blessed. just like ruined my parents <laughs> life for a year you know what I mean I've actually taken it upon myself in the last like two years to, to, to thoroughly like disengage myself from a lot of these platforms so I no longer have a Facebook um, I have like a Finsta, my Twitter. I'm trying to be so much more conscientious about how mm-hmm. I use it because no, I, I, I've become really, really acutely aware of like how this can appear to maybe future employers or like, yeah, potential, potential employers. Um, I've known people to have like job opportunities rescinded for them because of shit they said on the internet right. like now. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's scary. I, so at this point, it's just beyond just racist comments. Like, cause like, okay, I, <laughs> I don't believe like, I, first of all, no, I'm not a fucking racist. And also... My, my issue with what I've said in the past that I've had to take down isn't because it's racist. It's just because it's like reflective of me at a time that like, OK, when the whole Brett Kavanaugh thing happened, I remember I was being really I was really I was obviously really upset. And I said some extremely inflammatory things on Twitter. And I looked back like two weeks later. I was like, I can't say this shit. Like, but no one's going to fucking maybe... hire me if they see this. Well, OK, like... well, I think that there's a difference between inflammatory and racist. And maybe that's right. what brings okay. us back to Kyle. Right. Is that you may express something that is a more extreme version of what you currently think. But if you are on record as saying the N word, I don't know. Like that to me. Yeah, that that's like you a don't big go to Harvard. No, no. I don't know. Let's... But the other thing that I want to ask you, Shireen, is, you know, on the flip side, as progressives, we're like, what's up with all these 16 year olds who commit tr- crimes being tried as adults? Right. We yeah, see this a lot true. with like young men of color exactly. who are brought in for, you know, a robbery or whatever. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, we're going to throw the book at them. They're 16. They're old enough to stand trial. What do you think about like what is the age of responsibility as an adult? You know, it's funny. Um, I was like thinking that a few I want to say months ago when all those like news about the brides of ISIS, like all, all these like women who uh, were married to ISIS soldiers and they married ISIS fighters. At 16, exactly. At, for I like, yeah, by yeah. choice. Yeah. At 15. Some of them were like 14. Really young who, women. Just like, yeah, yeah, who left. And then, um, you know, and, you know, they, they got their citizenships revoked yeah. and they were just like, you know, we were kids. Now they're and running then, away in and like, now they're Iraqi like, prison. And, and, you know, they're like trying to get back. Yeah. To like, for instance, the UK, the case that I'm talking about, it's it involves a British, um, like woman, a British girl. Like she's, I'm gonna say like 20 now, 21 mm-hmm. now, um, and she has a baby, and she's like, you know, like I was stupid, but at the same, you know, so I was like thinking about that, and honestly, I have no um, response, like I have no answer for okay. it. Okay, all right, Shireen, I think your story, the story that you bring up about this. British ISIS bride who was like 16 when she left is is really is a really good analogy for this Kyle story. I after like reading as much as I could about it, like I I really decided that she should be brought back in. Like she should be forgiven. She has a baby. The baby didn't do anything wrong. And it was fucked. Like okay, I'm not saying she should have gone to Iraq to go marry an Islamic state fighter. I think that's fucked. Okay, and but it's like, what are you gonna do? Just leave her out there? And so, if I can forgive her, can I forgive him? I don't know. I think but maybe we can forgive him. But like, we're not talking about citizenship. We're talking about right. Harvard, like okay, the ultimate true. privilege of privilege. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, yes, can he crawl his way back into society? Absolutely. But does he deserve a place at the most selective school in the United States? A place that could go to a student of color or somebody who just has never called someone the N word? Yeah, but. <laughs> 
I'm asking you this, Mackenzie. Ask just me imagine, <laughs> just imagine Kyle. Yes. Okay? okay. A Harvard, like you too, Mira. Yeah. Okay. Imagine a Harvard <laughs> graduated Kyle, and uh, like a, I don't know, like rejected Kyle. Which one of those Kyles? Do you think would be a better human and be de-radicalized? I mean, maybe uh, yes, maybe he'll be exposed to like progressive thinkers and he'll exit Harvard. I don't know, a, a liberal, but maybe not. Maybe he'll just be like another Harvard douchebag who goes to work on Wall Street. I don't know. I mm. honestly don't care that much about him. I think that like he should. There are consequences for his actions. They're harsh. They're hard. I hope he learns a lesson. And I hope that every other young man learns a lesson too. Or woman. I think that's well said, Mackenzie. Don't call people the N-word. Yeah, bottom don't, line. Don't do it. Well, anyway, I'll wrap up by saying that I'm very, very thankful that uh, the internet did not exist in the form that it currently does when I was 16. I do have empathy for Kyle. I also think I also think that these ISIS teen brides should be allowed back in, but there are like there are degrees, right? There are degrees. There are degrees. It's of, not the same of situation. But it's still like actions. stupid things you do when you're 16 or like. 19. All right, let's close out with the stupidest thing that we did when we were 16. <laughs> Mira, oh start God. with you. I'll start. I was uh, dating a 21 year old deadbeat who played a lot of video games in his parents' house where he lived. So really glad I don't have lifelong consequences for that. Oh Could have married God. that guy if right. I were a teen ISIS bride. That would suck. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay. Okay. Probably the stupidest shit I did was like smoke weed for the first time and throw up all over my best friend. I mean, that's some dumb shit. I tried to pierce my own ears <laughs> and it got affected. Thank I you should have known honesty. better. That's yeah. All right. That concludes this episode of The Crew Teen Confessional. Thank you guys, as always. Thanks for having us.